Prescient Analytics, a premier provider of data analytics services, combines the most advanced technologies and analytic techniques to solve our clients' complex problems. Our analysis as a service team, leveraging the best-in-class analytic platforms, can assist law firms conducting data-intensive investigations and discovery to achieve the desired result. The following notional investigation is based on real-world examples of prescience analysts providing quick, comprehensive, and compelling analysis to major international law firms. In this demonstration, our analysts, using an advanced statistical analysis and topographical data visualization program, are able to identify potential money laundering activities. In our scenario, a multinational bank has been notified that it is a target of a Department of Treasury investigation against its U.S. banking operations. The allegation is that the U.S. bank laundered money from foreign nationals appearing on sanctions lists. The bank hired outside counsel to conduct an internal investigation to determine the depth of the problem, to mitigate any potential risk from future prosecution, and to the extent necessary, prepare the bank's legal strategy going forward. The bank has given us metadata on all accounts within the scope of the inquiry in order to determine the scope of the illegal activity. We begin by ingesting all of the relevant account metadata provided to us by the bank into our advanced statistical analysis program. Prescient analysts can look at hundreds of statistical variables in any dataset and, using the most advanced analytic platforms in the marketplace, find hidden patterns and relevant outliers. The results of this analysis are represented in topographical shapes. The large sheet in the middle looks to be associated with normal business account data, fairly indistinguishable from one another. In addition to the sheet in the middle, we have two structures that diverge from the main data set. To the left looks to be boutique individual accounts of high-value bankers. On the right, we have our normal personal accounts split into checking and savings branches. For our investigation, only the central business accounts matter. Using our analytic toolbox, we can glean additional insight into these accounts by searching for certain key features that are associated with our potential fraudulent activity. For example, we can look at the deposit in-out ratio, a metric that may indicate structured deposits, to find potentially suspicious accounts. We see a small network of accounts on the fringes of our business section. Zooming in on that section, we can see three nodes accounting for 12 accounts total are colored red, indicating a high frequency of deposits compared to the rest of the data. This could be an example of someone trying to structure deposits into an account in order to avoid bank reporting requirements. We can also look at the number of deposits per month and the percentage of deposits emanating from the state of the targeted account. Again, it lights up the same area in our data topography. We can create a group of these three nodes to do further analysis within our platform. Let's use our program to explore what is statistically significant about these accounts compared to the rest of our data. By checking the KS sign and the KS statistic, we can determine there is an increase in these particular variables in our suspect group represented by the plus sign, and that these increases are statistically significant, represented by a KS statistic near 1. These statistics allow us to be confident that we've excluded false positives from our results. Opening the source data pane, we can look at the specific rows within our data more closely. As we can see from the first column, one of these accounts has already been flagged for potentially illegal behavior, immediately making us more suspicious of the other 11 accounts that are statistically similar. We can also see that all of the accounts are located in Florida, North Carolina, or New Jersey and are connected to three account managers. Using the most advanced analytics technology, we have sifted through tens of thousands of accounts to narrow our focus on just 12 accounts with just three account managers. Now that we've narrowed down our data to the area of immediate interest, we'll select all of the rows in the source data and export it to a spreadsheet in order to perform further analysis. In our continuing investigation into money laundering, we begin by moving the 12 suspicious bank accounts identified in our topographical and statistical analysis into our Semantica analysis platform. Immediately, using the employee IDs, we can identify that the 12 accounts were created not by one, but by three separate bank employees, Philip Allen, Christina Perez, and Wes Burns. But these three individuals work in three different locations the bank's Miami, Charlotte, North Carolina, and Newark, New Jersey offices. And we don't know if there's a systemic problem or just three individual independent actors. It is possible that these three employees working from three separate locations each independently created accounts that are potentially being used in criminal activity. However, we can analyze additional data provided by the bank to determine if employees have any additional factors in common and additionally determine 
if other individuals at the bank are involved beyond these three account managers. The three employees are located in three separate locations, so they do not share any direct supervisors. However, by ingesting and analyzing additional internal data sources, including the bank's human resource files and travel and expense data, we find that these three employees share a number of non-obvious links. We find that Christina Perez, Wes Burns, and Philip Allen were all participants in a specific session of the bank's annual compliance training classes in February 2014 and 2015, as well as a conference in March 2015. Looking at the expense report data, we also learned that the three employees attended dinners together following those events, which were recorded as business expenses. Those dinner expenses were submitted by Samantha Sisko, a regional compliance officer in charge of the bank's East Coast operations. As a regional compliance officer, it would have been Samantha Sisko's responsibility to review, approve, or escalate suspicious transactions associated with the accounts. We now have an additional person we can research. Now, we can investigate additional links between the three account managers and Ms. Sisko by ingesting and analyzing the bank's HR data. We find that Samantha Sisko and Philip Allen, one of the account managers, share a previous work experience, National First Mutual Bank, and that another compliance officer, Dean Harris, also shares that link. Focusing on Dean Harris, we find that he was the instructor for the specific compliance training sessions the three account managers attended. Furthermore, while he was not included in the business dinners the other employees attended, he submitted dinner expenses to the same restaurants on the same nights indicating that the five individuals would have had an opportunity to meet. Using the latest in data analytics, we have just identified the five actors and 12 most relevant accounts from the bank's entire transaction systems.